Hi everyone, I'm Katherine Liang and I'm with Google TV Marketing and I'm here today at the Google Developer Village at South by Southwest with CTO of Pandora, Tom Conrad, and joining us remotely is Mario Kiraz, VP of Google TV. Tom, um, thank you for joining us and Mario as well. Hi Mario. Yes. Hey Tom. So uh, I'd like to start us off by doing a little introduction. Tom, maybe you could start us off with a brief introduction to Pandora, just for, sure. um, for starters. Yeah, sure. So um, I, I'm the CTO of Pandora, and I run the product organization there. So that's all of engineering and product design and technical operations and kind of from product concepts through delivering bits to listeners, it's all kind of my fault. Um, <laughs> and uh, I've been with the company for almost eight years now, because that goes all the way back to the, the, the beginning, the creation of Pandora. and um, I was just trying to figure this out. I think it's my sixth South by Southwest. Um, and, you know, so Pandora is a personalized radio service. Uh, you, 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 you come to us on your mobile phone or uh, on your laptop or now on your, on your television, and you tell us about uh, an artist or a song that you love. And our goal is to create just out of this, this unending stream of, of music that you'll love. Some, some, you know, old familiar songs you can sing along with, but also kind of full of discovery and personalization, and, and uh, uh, you know, that's, that's what we try to do every day. Fantastic. And Mario, can you also give us a brief introduction to Google TV? Sure. Um, Catherine, I'm sure you could do a great job as well. Um, I, uh, I'm Mario Kados, and I'm the VP of Products and General Manager of Google TV. I've been with Google for about seven years, and uh, over the past year or so, I've been heading up the Google TV effort. And what we're trying to do with Google TV is basically bring as many entertainment options into the living room as we can through the browser, through Android applications, and through Google services for your TV. We work with a number of different TV manufacturers so that you have an option in what kind of product you want to, to purchase, which is powered by Google TV. And we also work with lots and lots of developers bringing great apps to Google TV. I'm really excited to be here with Tom and with Pandora. I'm a huge fan and a huge user and listener of Pandora on my Android phone, on my Google TV at home. And uh, I know that I'm one of many, many fans of Pandora. So I'm excited to uh, exchange some ideas with Tom and to answer some of the questions from, from the world. Awesome. Great. Great. So, uh, yeah, Tom, tell us what makes Pandora unique from other internet radio apps. What is, and what, what is the music genome project? Sure, sure. Um, well, I think what sets Pandora apart from other music services out there is that we're the, we're the only service that's focused entirely on you. We don't see it as our job to um, kind of tell you what kind of music you should be listening to. It's our job to listen to your feedback, you know, your thumbs up, your thumbs down, and create an experience that's entirely tailored to, to what you love in the music universe. Um, and I think that's, that's pretty unique in the, in the music sphere. A lot of music is sort of about, this is what's hot, this is what's emerging, this is what's cool right now. And we kind of, we set all of that aside and we just talk about, you know, what is the music that you love? And if that's, you know, if that's marching band music, that's, that's great by us. Um, and uh, what, what, what sits underneath all of this personalization that we do um, is, is this system we call the Music Genome Project. And um, the kind of remarkable thing about it is the way that it works fundamentally is we have a team of professional musicians who come to the office every day. They put headphones on and they listen to each and every song that plays on Pandora. Um, and they, they analyze those tracks across hundreds of different musicological dimensions. So not just are there guitars, what kind of guitars, how are the guitars played, what role does the guitar play in the overall composition? There's, there's 40 different attributes that describe the vocal performance. How gravelly is it? How much, you know, how breathy is it? How much falsetto is used? All of these different musicological traits, which allows us to connect songs together based on their fundamental kind of musical, you know, fingerprint, um, uh, uh, which, is, which is where the whole experience starts from. You tell us that you love a particular song, we go out into the music universe and find some other things that are similar and then kind of take you on this, this journey of, of music discovery and entertainment. That's amazing. You know, that's exactly, I think, the reason why it's caught on so much and really makes it unique. And Mari, can you give us um, a brief understanding of what Google TV um, 
what features of Google TV make it unique from other connected TV platforms? Sure. So I think it's important to think about what's happening in this world of connected TVs or the web coming into the living room. It used to be 30 years ago that people had three or four TV stations in this country, for example, so they had access to the network uh, stations. And TV with the added the cable went from three or four stations to 300 or 400 stations. Uh, but what happened then is a lot of people thought, oh, network television is going to die and cable is going to take over. That didn't happen. You know, today people still love to watch, um, you know, American Idol and Modern Family and some of these, uh, you know, Glee and some of these great shows on network television. But they also love to watch ESPN and Fox and so forth. And what we're seeing now, 30 years after the advent of cable, is we're seeing the web coming into the living room and we're going from hundreds of channels to millions of channels on TV. And uh, we believe, again, that the web is not going to replace traditional uh, television, whether it's network or cable. It's going to be complementary to it. And so what we believe is really important and what we're focused on is, first of all, enabling a lot of these new web channels to come to TV. Web channels come to TV in ways that people might expect, which is more video on TV, lots of them. For example, through Google TV, you can access more than 80,000 TV episodes and uh, films through, uh, through the platform. Uh, but I think it goes even beyond video. And what's wonderful about the web on your TV in your living room it are things like Pandora. So not only are you watching video on your TV, which is what you traditionally think of TV as, but you're doing a lot of other things too. Music is one of them. You're, most people's TVs are connected to the best speakers in their house. And this is why I think users have loved using Pandora on Google TV is because they, it goes beyond their active video watching. It's, it's really enhancing their, their entertainment abilities. And so we're focused on enabling more and more of the web content to come to TV through video and other things. And also we're very focused on helping users find the entertainment that they want to find. Because when you go to millions of channels, uh, the discovery of content, whether it be video or other forms of entertainment through apps, is really, really important. Great. So, you know, we've talked about Pandora, we've talked about Google TV. I'd like to really bring this together and ask you, Tom, what excites you about Google TV and what makes the Pandora experience on Google TV different compared to your smartphone, your computer, and et cetera, other products that you might access Pandora from? Sure. You know, Pandora started as a website way back in 2005. and. Um, but from the, from the very beginning, we understood that if we were going to be successful in kind of redefining what radio is, we had to kind of break free from the PC and, and bring the Pandora experience to all the places where people traditionally consume um, radio. And um, of course, a big part of that story is um, uh, Pandora in the, for the mobile phone. Huge, huge, huge success on Android. Um, uh, but about 35% of all radio listening happens in the home. And so uh, for years and years now, we've been making an investment in bringing Pandora into the living room. Um, so, you know, Blu-ray players and televisions and, um, you know, over-the-top boxes and just, you know, I think we're on as many as uh, 450 different consumer electronics devices. And um, the, the challenge there is that all of these platforms are a little bit different. And so we, you end up with a different implementation of Pandora, you know, kind of hundreds of times. Um, and so when uh, Google came to us um, uh, shortly before the launch of the initial Google TV platform, we were really excited about this idea that we could take the investment that we've made in Android and leverage that to deliver a really, really great experience in the living room. And, and thank God we could, uh, we could leverage that investment because I think it gave us all of about four weeks to, uh, <laughs> uh, to develop for the platform to be one of your launch partners. And, um, uh, so we kind of sprang into action and um, took the, the, the Android application that, that our users know and love and put an entirely new kind of 10-foot user experience on top of it. Um, so you can sit on the couch and with you know, you know, your remote control interact with Pandora very, very simply. You get big, beautiful album art on the screen. You can, of course, give your thumbs up and thumbs down, change stations, learn more about the music that's playing. And um, it creates a really great kind of listening environment. Particularly, I love it for a party because, you know, 
you can have it up and going. Everybody knows what music is playing. It, it spurs all these great conversations about music and people grabbing their remote control, making new stations um, uh, to entertain themselves. It's, it's, uh, I love seeing people come together around the experience of Pandora. And, and I think uh, the Google TV application kind of does that uniquely well. Hmm. So you touch upon the fact that it's really difficult to manage all these different impl uh, implementations. Yeah. How, how challenging is that for your team? I mean, it's, it's, sort of, it's a spectacular challenge. I'd say, you know, um, I think it's you know, one of the, uh, the big accomplishments to the, uh, for Pandora is that we have been able to, um, you know, to, to build a presence on, you know, all of these different platforms and, and devices. But um, I, certainly, uh, I certainly dream of a day where, you know, you know we can take hundreds of implementations and narrow it down to, you know, just the Google DB platform, for example, as a, as a unifying factor. Um, and the great thing that that does for um, our listeners is it lets us innovate faster. It lets mm -hmm. us, you know, bring new features to the living room um, by, you know, impacting just the, the, the same code base that we use for uh, the Android application. We can get those onto the 10-foot experience, you know, just immediately. And it's much, much harder to do that when you have, you know, hundreds of different implementations that all have to be tweaked to, to add uh, new features. Absolutely. Mario, can you speak to your strategic vision for Google TV and what you see that tying into the music platform as? Okay. Um, we, you know, I mentioned a, a couple of aspects of our strategic vision. One is we're going to continue to find ways uh, to make it easy for developers to bring their content, entertainment, their information to Google TV. So uh, it, we've chosen to build Google TV on Android. So that, so that one of the advantages for developers would be indeed that if a developer has an Android uh, mobile application, phone or a tablet application, that they're not starting from scratch and bringing that, that experience to television. And um, in, in many cases, in many, many cases, we've seen that a Google TV app has been developed very quickly from uh, existing Android application. And we've done that through, and there are lots of examples of it, but I'll just na name a couple. So a lot of applications depend on touch, of course, on the phone and, and on a tablet. And we've made, we've built a platform in a way that your application is easily deep and navigable on TV because TVs still don't have uh, touch screens. And so we've, uh, we've done that. And a, lot, most, a lot of applications on the phone will work in, in uh, portrait mode, but it is not in portrait mode. It's in landscape mode. So we've done some things in the platform so that it becomes a lot easier for developers to bring their apps. So for example, so the apps are easily be that navigable, they don't require they, they don't have to require touch and that they work in landscape all the time on your on your television. But we'll continue to work on those things. The Android market now um, the Play Store uh, rebranded is available on, on Google T V the same back end, the same content that you find on your tablet and on your phone. So uh, bringing more content to television, that includes the browser, of course, as well. And everything we do, is we're not just taking the, the standard browser maybe that you might see on your phone or uh, on your tablet, we're making it appropriate for television. So you can play 1080p content on Chrome on television, and there's a lot of great high-definition uh, uh, high, high content that uh, owners of websites want to play on television. And we're uh, trying to bring live TV and video closer together. An example is the YouTube app we built. In watching, uh, our goal is for you to be watching a TV show. And if you want to switch to a YouTube channel, you can switch to a YouTube channel as you change channels on your television. And, and again, that, that makes uh, the, the video experience across TV and web very, very seamless in, in both directions. And, and I think that by having an open platform, uh, I'll go back to what I mentioned earlier, we've opened the living room to uh, forms of entertainment that you don't think of traditionally for your television. Television is primarily video. We've opened TV to other forms of entertainment. Uh, you know, what Tom and the, the team at Pandora built is, is wonderful. There's a, a cute and very uh, popular app on Google TV uh, called Classy Fireplace. And if you want to have a fireplace in your living room, you download Classy Fireplace, and, and it, um, it plays a, you know, a, a fun uh, screensaver type of application. And I think we're going to see more and more applications 
which are really targeting the time and uh, using the television beyond traditional video. And again, music is one of the, the huge applications, and Pandora has done one early, and we see our user really uh, taking take advantage of what Pandora has brought to people. That's great. So going back to that decision point, Tom, yeah. <laughs> to when you decided to build for the Google TV platform, can you tell us, you know, speaking especially to developers out there that are considering building for the Google TV platform, how and why did you decide to be an early developer? Sure. Well, I think, you know, for us it's, it's kind of, it's an imperative to, to make sure that that Pandora is available in all of these kind of venues where people traditionally consume radio. So, you know, we've, we're doing tons and tons of work, for example, to bring Pandora to the car. We have all kinds of automotive partners um, that are helping us um, integrate the Pandora listening experience into the, into, into the driving experience. Um, and, uh, but really, secondly to the car, the most important venue for us really is the living room. Um, as Mario said, it's the, it's, it's the place where we have the best speakers in the house. It's a place where people come together to, to spend time as a family. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a place where traditionally tons and tons and tons of radio is consumed. And so for us, it was kind of, it was, uh, it's a core strategic kind of investment that we make to, to make sure the Pandora is available um, uh, in the home. And, um, and the really appealing thing about the, uh, the Google TV platform is that we, you know, again, we're able to leverage the, the, all of the effort that goes into building our Android application, um, and we're able to have complete control over the user experience um, on the television. So we can, you know, build this beautiful, simple, elegant, you know, user experience, um, and, uh, and anytime we want to add new features or enhance it, it's as simple as, you know, submitting, you know, a new build to the, the now Google Play store, and, um, uh, and just immediately then that's available to our users. So just uh, being able to leverage our existing investment in Android, um, to be, have complete control over the user experience, to easily be able to update it through Google Play, it's kind of the combination of all of those things that makes it kind of um, you know, just a no-brainer for us. So were there any lessons learned along the way that you would like to pass on to other developers? Um, I mean, I think it's just, you know, the... Uh, Probably the most important thing is just to make sure you really spend time thinking about the environment of the of the home, of the of the living room, of the you know the ten foot UI, of the the, the characteristics of the, the remote control, and the way that, that people want to interact with the content. I think the the only mistake you can really make is to to um, uh, not pay attention to the environment, right? Mm -hmm. So um, really think about your users, think about their homes, think about how they might interact with your product, and step away from you know, some of the design decisions you made when you're thinking about this tiny little thing in the palm of your hand, think about this big, beautiful, you know, 50-inch television um, and, uh, and build from there. That's great advice. And Mario, can you speak to some of the features of the Google TV platform that developers should be aware of? Sure. I, um, I mentioned a couple of them uh, before. Let me, let me go over uh, some of the things I made a few notes for myself so that I can, um, I can be accurate in what we're, we're talking about. So the one key thing is for, is first of all, the developers have access both to a uh, fully capable browser, so uh, web app developers can bring their apps to Google TV through the Chrome browser, and they of course have access to the uh, application framework, the, the Android application framework. Uh, you have, for example, the Dalvin virtual machine that's optimized for mobile devices available on uh, for, uh, for Google TV apps. You have uh, the optimized graphics powered by our 3D graphics library, the 3D graphics based on OpenGL ES 1.0 uh, specifications. We have uh, SQLite for structured data storage. Uh, we have media support for most common audio, video, and still image formats. And we have a uh, development and so we've tried to bring the richness of the mobile platform to, to TV so that developers have a lot of flexibility to bring their creativity to TV. And we've seen that, that creativity come to life in, in some really interesting ways. You know, we're talking about here, but sports, of course, which is uh, tremendously 
popular on television. And so there are, there are a number of interesting sports apps that are being built for, for TV, which take advantage, for example, of the fact that the application, Google the Android app, Google TV, have access to the user's uh, programming information. And uh, they can also, an, an application can also change stations to a particular channel. So you can imagine a sports application that provides, such as uh, the application Foods, T A D C, which uh, gives you the degree of excitement at different sporting events. And if you see a, an NBA game or a, um, an English Premier League game or a uh, Major League Baseball game, which is uh, in, a, in a really exciting stage, you can say, oh, this game is on live right now, and the app can switch you right to the station that's playing that game. So we're, we're trying to give developers not only the power of the mobile platform, both through the browser as well as through the Android application framework, but we're also bringing some uh, TV-specific TV functionality. We're at the very beginning of that. We're really planning some very interesting things uh, which uh, we expect to to, uh, to bring to market, and not so distant to give developers even more access to, uh, to television features, which, uh, which enrich their application. Fantastic. And now I'm going to open it up to the social channels, and we've collected quite a few questions. And uh, Tom, the first one goes to you. So in light of, um, in the news, a lot of the giant telco companies have eliminated or are planning to eliminate unlimited data plans to curb usage in overtaxed networks. Does this cause any concern for Pandora? And what is the average bandwidth for a typical user in a month of streaming music? And this comes from Eric James. Hi, Eric. <laughs> um, this is a good question. We get this um, a lot um, since this has kind of become a news story, um, uh, kind of in the, the you know, news cycle around this. But the, you know, it's been about two years now since um, uh, AT&T started putting caps on data plans and things, and 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 we've seen no impact at all to you know our business, our growth, people's uh -huh. consumption of Pandora, and and I think that's because. Um, Pandora is actually a relatively um, lightweight application with respect to the amount of bandwidth that it consumes. Um, a typical user of Pandora in a month would consume um, less than 10% of their data plan from their, their Pandora listening. Um, so uh, um, I think uh, Pandora consumes less bandwidth than you might imagine, um, and um, uh, you know, a typical user is in no danger of, of, of you know, impacting their their, their data cap, if you like, um, uh, through their use of Pandora. Excellent. So they can continue enjoying all the great music. Right. The next one comes from John Blossom. He says, a question for the Pandora team. I love Pandora on Google TV. I listen to it all the time through my home entertainment speakers. However, one of the ongoing frustrations I have is that purchasing tracks that intrigue me that I hear on Pandora is not possible via the Google TV interface. Moreover, Pandora doesn't yet offer a purchasing interface to Google Play Music or social sharing options for Google Plus via Google TV. Any thoughts as to when we might see better purchasing integration and social integration? Sure. Um, we, you know, we, we don't tend to talk about, you know, um, what we're going to do next before we actually do it. But, uh, you know, I can say that it's fun to watch the Google Play ecosystem sort of mature and, and the, the great kind of music, per, per, you know, purchase products that have been brought to market over the course of the last uh, year or so by Google and, you know, um, uh, helping musicians sell music is a big part of our uh, um, sort of charter at Pandora and so uh, uh, I hope to, to be able to enable all of those kinds of things in time. Great. We look forward to that. And uh, the next question comes from Tony Busco. He says, while play, playing music in the background, is there a way to give thumbs up or thumbs down without having to go back to the native app to do that? It's uh, uh, a great question. There's not today, but uh, um, I'm excited to you know to work with your partners at places like LG to get those thumbs up and thumbs down buttons right on the remote control. So <laughs> just uh, sounds good. So William McKee asks, uh, having the option to choose to listen to an entire album and make playlists of a given band uh, was pushed to me, that is pushed to me in the free version of Spotify, but does Pandora have any future plans to implement this option in their free product? Yeah, so we, um, we think about the music world 
as being kind of um, split between what radio style listening. So it's a really, really simple experience. You press a button, you know, it's, we personalize it to your taste. It takes no effort at all. We play old favorites you can sing along with. We play, you know, new songs that you've never heard before. Um, and uh, we really see ourselves as the future of radio, kind of redefining what's possible with radio in this connected, you know, world we live in. Um, um, the other mode of music listening is this kind of on-demand thing. I want to listen to this entire album right now. Or I want to hear this song right now. Um, and I think that maybe is like, that's kind of like the future of the, the record store, if you like. Um, and uh, um, we're pretty content to focus on the, the, you know, reinventing radio and to let others sort of imagine what the record store might become. And that's partially because uh, when you look at the way people consume music in this country, about 80% of, of all music listening hours are in this, this radio format. Um, you know, it's a medium that, um, you know, hundreds of millions of people um, enjoy every day. And, uh, and so we feel like we have a lot of work to do there, um, a lot of opportunity there. And, uh, you know, we'll let others like, you know, like Google with their great Google Play music service um, kind of uh, um, till the soil in the, the on-demand world. Sounds good. And now, Mario and Tom, I wanted to open it up to see if you guys had any questions for each other. I know this is a great opportunity for you guys, you know, as leads of the respective organizations to share some ideas. So, um, Tom, do you have any questions for Mario? Sure. You know, as a, um, I love some television, a <laughs> lot of TV, um, and I'm really interested in this kind of, you know, convergence of, of, of the connected world and the television and one of the great things that it's enabled, of course, is that you know now, in addition to um, the shows that have recorded on my DVR or the shows that happen to be you know being broadcast right now, there's all these great movie and video streaming services. Um, you know, of course, Netflix is is, is one example, or, but um, you know, Google has their own kind of on-demand um, um, uh, movie purchase and rental service. Um, but one of the tricks as a consumer is it's pretty hard to figure out what content is where? Like, I know that I want to watch Breaking Bad, but I have to figure out, well, is the, the season that, you know, I want to watch available for streaming on Netflix, or is it available for rental, or is it available for purchase? And I, all these different services, is on demand on my cable box, is it actually happens to be on right now, live on television. And I think one of the things that I'm most excited about um, where Google TV is concerned is it seems like with Google's incredible expertise in search that you could solve that problem for me. So I could, you know, my interest is breaking bad, not I have to figure out what service is on. So can you talk a little bit about how Google TV is tackling kind of content discovery in this windowed multi-service world? Uh, great question, Tom. Uh, we, we've taken a pretty big step, I think, with our last software update in tackling this, but this is a, it's more of a, more of a marathon than a, than a sprint for sure. <laughs> we have our TV and movies app on Google, Tele on Google TV, and we, we need to make sure that we, we, uh, we take you through that app if you haven't uh, seen it, and Catherine can do it right there live. But we're basically trying to do exactly what you're describing. Uh, TV and Movies is an application that basically allows for you to go in and without having to know what the sources of the content are, whether it comes from Netflix or Amazon or YouTube or HBO Go or from TV or wherever that might be, yeah, based on what you watch before, based on what you've rated before in the future, based on signals, you know, from your Google Plus uh, network and so forth, uh, we are providing you recommendations if you're looking for drama or comedy or uh, uh, you know, rom-com, whatever that might be. We're giving you recommendations of uh, films to watch, and then we can tell you, okay, these films are similar to uh, this particular film that you've seen before. And our goal is to help you very quickly to find the content you want to watch, movie or the TV show, and, uh, and then to say, oh, now that you know that you want to watch this, here are the different options for watching this show. Uh, and you click on the different options for watching. Well, it's going to be on live TV on Sunday evening. And you're like, well, but I don't really want to wait. I want to watch it now. Okay, well, you can watch it. You can rent it now from YouTube, or you can buy the show from Amazon, oh, uh, or we know that you have a Netflix subscription and it might be available on Netflix. So that, that is our, uh, our approach, very much what you're, what you're describing is, because I think Google knows how to um, aggregate and index vast amounts of information from many, many sources, 
um, and then we're, we're trying to do that and then rank that information in a way that's relevant for you as a user. And then we send you to whatever the destination uh, is which the content owner would like for us to send you to. So we get the information of what shows are available from the content owners. And uh, if Netflix wants us to send the user then to the Netflix application on Google TV, that's where they go. If Amazon wants uh, us to send the user to their website for viewing the, the movie, then that's where they uh, that's where they go. So I think it's a great a great question. And you know, in this world of millions of channels, that's exactly what we help to do is to is to uh, f help you find the content regardless of the source. And Mario, do you have any questions for Tom? I do. I, I think one of the really important things for um, all types of apps you know, coming to TV, but certainly for music as well, and from a couple of the questions that, that you had, I think this would be helpful, um, to combine or to bring the, the multiple screen experience closer together. You know, let's say that you launch Pandora on your Google TV, and it's running in the background, you're doing something else on Google TV, and one person wanted to, you know, um, you know thumbs up or thumbs down the, the song, um, you know, you should be able to do that on your phone. So your you know, Pandora on your phone uh, should know that your, uh, you know, that we're running Pandora is running on Google TV, so that you can thumbs up and thumbs down. So what what ideas or thoughts do you have for for us, or you know, do you think uh, is this something that would interest you guys to to, uh, to work in a more multi-screen type of type of an environment? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, just uh, just as a baseline. Um, to remind everybody, you know, you have, a, you know, a, a Pandora account, and that's a, a kind of a universal account across all of the places that you enjoy Pandora. And so the stations that you're creating and personalizing on the web or on your phone are available when you're connected in your car or available on your television. So we do have this kind of, you know, universal experience today. Um, but what Mario's getting at, I think, is really the, the, the exciting, you know, potential evolution of that, which is, you know, how can we use the the phone in your pocket to control the television? Um, how can we bring people together to let them collaborate around the listening experience? And um, uh, we've got a bunch of exciting ideas in that area, and it's another example where the Google TV platform is so powerful. You know, when we have complete control um, from our development environment of both the television and the phone, there's suddenly so many things that we can easily do, make enhancements to both to, to allow them to cooperate. That's so much harder when you know you're you're talking about this kind of you know more heterogeneous world with hundreds of different implementations and things. So um, uh, I'd love to see um, uh, uh, Pandora kind of innovate around um, um, this multi-screen listening experience, and and uh, Google TV would be a really great place to to, to begin those experiments. Yeah, well, we're we're looking forward to we're looking forward to hearing from you and your team and from <coughs> other developers and uh, inputs for us on how we should be doing that. Do you guys have any last comments before we wrap up, Tom? No, this is great. Um, you guys, it's a shame you can't all be here in Austin. The sun is finally coming out, and uh, Google's taken over an entire block. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's pretty pretty exciting. And Mario. Well, I just want to thank Tom again for, for joining us. I, like I said at the beginning, I love Pandora, and I think a lot of your Google TV users love Pandora. And I know that our, our OEMs, so, um, LG, Video, Sony, Samsung, are really excited that we're working with you guys. Great. Well, thank you both for taking the time to join us this morning. And thank you all for watching and listening in. Signing okay. off from South by Southwest. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>